Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In two more days, we're going to get another interest rate announcement from the Bank of Canada. Will they be raising it again? Or are they going to pause like earlier this year? Well, if you've seen my video from a month ago, which was the last time the Bank of Canada increased rates, I mentioned that's likely going to be the final rate increase and we're not going to get any more in September or October. I mentioned the economy is slowing down, people are spending less money because they have less to spend, and that inflation is well on its way to the bank's 2% target over time. Well, a couple of days ago, we finally got some economic data for the second quarter of this year. And as it turns out, our GDP actually shrank a little bit, not too much, just an annualized contraction rate of 0.2%. But it does show that the rate increases over the last year have been working to cool the economy, and it validates some of the concerns I've been talking about on this channel. And because minus 0.2 is much lower than the positive 1.5% growth projection that the Bank of Canada had forecasted, I think this just throws a big wrench into anyone's plan to continue increasing rates further. I mean, if you look at GDP per capita, you can only assume that Canadians are already feeling the recession because on a real basis after inflation on the individual level, people are making less money. So they're feeling poorer. And the last time the GDP per capita fell this low was back in the great financial crisis. So this shows that Canadians are making less money at a rate not seen in over a decade. And maybe that's why right now, most economists are expecting for the Bank of Canada to hold interest rates at this Wednesday's announcement and basically keep the rate steady until March of next year. I think before when inflation was too high, there was political pressure for central banks around the world to tighten monetary policy. But now I'm starting to see the other way around where politicians don't want interest rates to go up any further. In fact, the premier of BC, David Eby, who's basically the guy that runs the provincial government right now, he wrote a letter directly to Tiff Macklem, the governor of the Bank of Canada, urging him to not further increase rates at this time. He mentions that people in the province are already hurting, and further financial tightening will only lead to more homelessness and significant economic and social damage to the country. So here's what he had to say in an interview with the CBC. Uh, to be blunt, I was really surprised to hear that the Bank of Canada was considering further interest rate increases uh, at the September meeting, that that was on the table, because I can tell you in British Columbia, uh, people with car loans, uh, uh, tenants are seeing uh, landlords that are refinancing pass, try to pass costs through to them. Small businesses are seeing the same at the commercial level. People with mortgages, uh, they're either locking in at much higher rates or they're seeing renewal dates come up that are going to have huge impacts on them. We're just seeing the beginning of the impact of this historic run up in rates. Uh, and I can tell you it's devastating. And it's also shutting down badly needed rental housing construction in the province and the private sector because the costs of builders are going up as they borrow money to finance the building before the tenants come in. You know, it's so critical that that frontline information, I believe, get, gets to the governor. I recognize the independent role. I would love to see the Bank of Canada look seriously at the impacts that uh, are taking place, not just in British Columbia, but across the country. Uh, I understand from Statistics Canada that the biggest driver of inflation right now in the country is increasing mortgage costs for people. And if you're increasing interest rates, that's only going to lead to higher mortgage uh, costs for people. I don't understand the logic of why this is even on the table. So yes, I would really encourage the bank to have a look at the impacts at a minimum to take a pause and to find ways to reduce pressure on, uh, on Canadians. So he's making some pretty good points. We're just starting to feel the impact of all the rate hikes. And I think people's financial situations are going to feel tighter going into the last quarter of this year. One of the unintended consequences of so many rate hikes is having the exact opposite effect of what the Bank of Canada wants to do. Because they want inflation to come down, but a big part of inflation is housing. And when you increase interest rates, the cost of housing actually goes up because your mortgage rate goes up. And like David Eby said, a lot of homeowners are now trying to share that cost increase with their tenants. So you have rental prices going up. According to Zumper.com, which tracks rent across Canada, the cost of rent compared to a year ago for one bedroom and two bedroom homes are up 15%. That's more than double the CPI rate of 2022. So housing is actually going up faster than the total cost of living. Here are some of the crazy statistics for different cities. We have Vancouver up about 12% year over year. Both Toronto and Ottawa are up about 25%. 
which is just mind-boggling. And even Calgary, where you think, you know, they have space there, they could just build more homes. But no, rent is up 24% there. So it's still quite competitive to find a place to live. When you think about a developer who wants to build housing, either purpose-built rental or condos, they usually have to go out and get a loan to finance their project. And of course, the higher the borrowing rate, the more expensive it is for them to build something. So it just makes it harder for them to go ahead with projects. And we even have developers just flat out give up on already greenlit projects, and they're just paying their investors back their 20% deposit. So here's a 400-unit condo project in Richmond, BC, that was going to go ahead and get built, but now because of higher interest rates, is no longer going to continue moving forward. And because of that, we're going to have 400 fewer units for people to live in. And with less building supply, it of course puts pressure on prices to go up, both for for people who want to buy homes and also for renters. So this is the problem. If the Bank of Canada actually wants the real cost of living to come down, they have to stop raising interest rates so the cost of housing can stabilize. As of right now, most likely the bank is going to put rates on hold in this next meeting. But just in case they don't and we get another 25 basis point increase, then I think that's going to set up for an even worse economy going into 2024. So I think what this means is if you live in a large city with a growing population like Vancouver, Toronto, and even some of the suburbs around those areas that have seen a lot of inflow in new residents over the last few years, I think it still makes sense to invest in real estate in those areas. But you have to be selective about what you buy. You can see over the last couple of years, the average sold price of Canadian homes has fluctuated up and down, and interest rates right now are at the highest point they've been in a very long time, and a lot of people are just simply not qualified to buy even starter homes. But once interest rates start to drop, then I think you're going to see a fall in the real estate market, not a crash or anything, maybe like a 5 or 10% correction, depending on the neighborhood. So I think that would be a good opportunity to look for investment properties. Because interest rates typically go down a lot. They don't just go down a little bit. If we look at Canada's interest rate across the last like 30 years, you can see every time it falls, it's not just one or two cuts. It's quite a steep drop off. So the next time we see a string of interest rate cuts, it might start the end of this year. It might start next year. It's going to depend on GDP because if we continue to see lower GDP, then the Bank of Canada will be forced to cut rates to fight off a recession and potentially deflation. So when that starts to happen, I'm going to start looking more closely at real estate listings in and around the Vancouver area because that's where I live. Because after a big interest rate cut, it's going to be mostly flat like this or like this or like this. And it's usually during those times where people who couldn't qualify to get a mortgage before, now they can because interest rates are lower. And that's when you see a big demand coming from new buyers, especially first time buyers. So home prices right now have basically done like this flat, maybe down a little bit. And once interest rates have fallen again and stay pretty much flat for a couple of years, then I think we're going to see prices start to do this again. Now, how far can interest rates be cut? That really depends on how bad the economy is. You know, sometimes it gets cut about halfway from like 6% down to about 3%. Uh, sometimes it goes from 4% to zero. So let's say just hypothetically, it drops from about 5% now to 2%. And it kind of just stays there as the Bank of Canada wants to see what happens next. I think as long as we get like a one year period where interest rates are relatively flat, then that'll be enough time for new buyers to prepare and enter the market and continue driving prices higher. Because when you look at the demographics of how much Canada's population is growing, it was recently discovered that Canada's population was actually undercounted by a full million by Statistics Canada. So that was a pretty big blunder. Because when you're making important decisions like how many homes to build, you need accurate data like how many people are coming into Canada. But when you undercount by 1 million, and a lot of those people that are undercounted, you know, they're going to move into the larger cities. So that's another big reason why we have have such a shortage of housing. I used to think that interest rates were the biggest contributor to home prices. But when you have such an explosive growth in population, and you don't have a plan to house those people, that's definitely going to skew the supply and demand equation of the market. And I just don't see the problem getting resolved anytime soon. So we'll have to see what the Bank of Canada does on Wednesday. If they do decide to pause, then that could be the start of a pivot, and it could be a sign that we'll actually see the first interest rate cut in the next few months. So thanks a lot for watching. Continue to keep yourself informed, and I'll talk to you in the next one.